TV really first um, kind of became part of my life about eight years ago. So I'd left the army. Um, I set up my first production company, um, but very much behind the scenes. So photography had always been my passion and my hobby, um, but also my experience in the military gave me a, a unique position to be able to get access to some interesting parts of the world. So I combined those two, um, those two parts and uh, basically started taking journalists, filmmakers, photographers to some of the most remote and quite often dangerous parts of the world. And um, that led me to um, get my first offer of doing my own expedition and having it filmed, which was Walking the Nile five years ago. And my feet haven't touched the ground since, really. It's been a busy, busy five years. Um, just completed my fifth expedition. The latest journey was around the Arabian Peninsula in the Middle East. I wanted to go to uh, what a lot of people would consider to be probably the most controversial and contested part of the planet um, and also arguably one of the most dangerous. For me though it was an opportunity to challenge some of the stereotypes and actually um, rather than going as a current affairs journalist seeing it through the lens of adventure and being on an expedition. So I travelled through 13 countries, 5,000 miles through places like Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon. Um, all these places that tend to be in the news for all the wrong reasons. Um, but showing it through the eyes of the local people that you meet along the way. And I met some fascinating characters, um, normal people, ordinary guys and, uh, that, that live in challenging circumstances. But I wanted to show uh, what life is like really for the people that live there. I think viewers will be surprised to see just how diverse the region is. I think if you think of the Middle East, you just think deserts, camels, maybe terrorism. Um, there's a lot more to it than that. And uh, I was welcomed with open arms in places that I really did not expect to be, places like Iraq and Syria. Um, I met some fascinating characters. Um, of course, there was a, some pretty big deserts. I crossed the empty quarter with a group of camels, but I also trekked across the Dofar Peninsula, which um, is actually gets a rainy season and in parts is a bit like being in the jungle. It's quite amazing. Um, in Lebanon, I crossed the mountain ranges, um, which were covered in snow at the time. Um, and I spent time with, with nomads, with the Bedouin, with soldiers, with um, all sorts of different people on all sorts of different sides of the uh, equation. So it was a really interesting journey. I think people will be fascinated to learn a bit more about the Middle East. It's, this is the kind of Middle East that you've never seen before. This for me was um, a very authentic journey in the sense that you know nothing was staged. You know we were on on the ground seeing what the life is like, and if that meant getting embedded with the special forces fighting ISIS, that's exactly what we did. So we spent um, a good week travelling through the front line of Iraq, um, capturing villages with the um, Iraqi army. Um, in Syria, we were embedded with um, the Assad dictatorship troops. We were traveling with the Russians, we went to places like Palmyra, we met Hezbollah for lunch, um, found ourselves on both sides of the fight in the West Bank um, with Palestinian protesters but also with Israeli Defense Force soldiers. So it's, it's kind of going at it with no agenda, showing it what, what it's really like. In terms of getting access, you know, my experience in the military has given me um, a good network of people. I've spent a lot of time in the Middle East um, and a good network of contacts there. Uh, this is a journey that's been 15 years in the planning. I first travelled to the region during the 2003 invasion. Uh, I was there in Baghdad and Mosul. So it was a real dream come true to go back to the region and see how it's changed in the last 15 years. I guess my military training and experience has given me an insight into conflict zones um, that a lot of people simply don't have. Um, and what that means is that if I go into a um, you know, room filled with men with guns, you're not automatically terrified because that is a, you know, potentially quite a scary prospect. Um, but you know, with that experience, you realize that actually people are people wherever you go. And um, it's meant that I've been able to connect with people all the way around the world, um, including people that you probably wouldn't want to <laughs> necessarily meet down a dark alleyway. But um, you know, I, I figured that you know, people are people and so uh, it's trying to understand them and what makes them tick uh, is really important to me and, um, and not being judgmental actually and, and going and, and meeting people on their terms in their own environment and, uh, and telling their story but not 
sugarcoating it. You know, I'm not there to like be anyone's propaganda tool. It's going in there and showing it with my own eyes and saying what I see. Simple as that. I think when I made my first piece of television, you know, my own expedition walking the Nile, that was pretty rough and ready. Um, I knew nothing really about TV other than sort of, uh, I guess what I've learned is that, you know, I'm away for five, six months at a time, sometimes more, getting hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage. So obviously you can't fit all of that into four or five hours of TV. So obviously there's a really rigorous editing process. Uh, which can be very tough. Luckily, that's not my job. I've got some very good editors working with me. Um, and it's something kind of sometimes quite sad that you don't get to show everything that you, you get. But um, it's a real skill, and I'm always really impressed by um, the, you know, the amount of work that goes into creating a TV documentary. And um, this one was particularly challenging because of the region, because of the access, and also because of the sensitivities around such a controversial region. But hopefully people will enjoy what comes out of it and, and see it for what it is, which is ultimately um, it's an adventure story um, showcasing a part of the world that's very misunderstood. So far I've been really lucky um, in that these have all been my ideas, these have been places that I've always wanted to visit and been passionate about. Um, I studied history at university, so um, I've tended to go to places that I've got a, at least a bit of background knowledge about. I've been lucky to get to over 100 countries now, but there's still a lot more out there. Um, I'd like to, like to spend a bit more time um, heading west, maybe South America. Um, but also Africa keeps drawing me back time and again. Um, and then some random places. I've still not been to Papua New Guinea yet, so let's see.